Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com. Today we have a hand from a $2,000 buy-in live poker tournament. We are playing very, very early in the day. And we have 20,000 chips at 5,100. So with Ace-4 offsuit on the button, I'm pretty much going to raise it every time. I'm certainly fine with this. I'm going to make it a full three big blinds, maybe even bigger. A bearded kid. <laughs> Please do not take offense to the term bearded kid. The kid had a beard. Um, he likes to call in the small blind. Now, when I am giving tags to people for these videos, I'm typically trying to write something that makes me recall these players. I actually remember this guy. This guy was maybe 25 or 30 years old. He had a giant beard, and um, he seemed to be probably a little bit splashy and a little bit aggressive. See, if I just wrote kid, I would have no clue who this was. But this is a guy who I thought was probably reasonable, but at the same time, probably wasn't going to be too insane. Basically, I thought the guy was probably good enough. So... He likes to call the small blind. When he calls the small blind, I think he's going to have mostly a reasonable small blind calling range, which is going to be a lot of good big cards, a lot of suited connectors, a lot of medium and small pairs, a lot of suited aces, probably not stuff like 9-8 offsuit or 8-6 offsuit, right? He's going to be calling with decent stuff like queen-jack suited and king-queen suited. So keeping that in mind, this board is actually quite good for the opponent, right? He should have a lot of stuff like flush draws, top pairs, maybe some middle pairs, maybe some gut shots, maybe some under pairs. And a lot of those hands are not going to fold to one flop bet. So when he checks, and I have just stone no equity or very little equity, I mean, the only good card for me on the turn is an ace, right? I'm just going to check behind and give up. It is okay to raise and then just give up, especially when the small blind calls. If the big blind calls, you should probably be fighting a little bit harder. But when the small blind calls, the small blind should actually have something decent, assuming they're competent, right? And I did assume this kid was competent. Um, turns an ace of clubs, and the opponent leaves now for almost pot. It's not what I wanted to see. Well, I wanted to see the ace, but I did not want to see a pot lead when it completes the flush. When people take this line of betting very big, when the turn is very good for my obvious range, I mean, when I check back this flop, I'm going to have a lot of under pairs and a lot of aces. That's pretty much it. So this drills my aces, and it misses the under pairs. When the opponent's betting in this spot, the opponent probably has either a very good draw or a very good made hand. So what is a very good draw? Well, flush draws, right? Like king of clubs is a hand that may want to bet like this. Maybe he has something like 10-9 with a 10 of clubs he wants to bet like this. So that all makes sense. Um, made hands are pretty obvious. They pretty much all beat me. <laughs> so I'm going to call on the turn, but I really don't like this. And I don't think this is going to go well for me too often. He's going to blast the river most of the time. And that's going to put me in a pretty miserable spot. If he checks the river, by the way, on any river, I'm just checking behind. Unless it's an ace or a four. River is a queen. It's not really what I wanted to see. And now he bets quite big again, 1,100. Uh, so in this situation, if we assume the opponent is good and balanced, it doesn't really matter that much what I do one time in a vacuum because he is going to have the appropriate amount of bluffs to value bets in his range to make me not care if I call or fold because they're all neutral in terms of equity. So like right here, he's betting um, half pot, right? So when he bets half pot, he needs to be bluffing a, a ratio that gives me a break-even price, right? So if I'm getting three to one pot odds, right? That means he needs to have three bluffs. I'm sorry, three value bets for every one bluff. If he's doing that correctly, then it doesn't matter if I call or if I fold. So when deciding hands to call on the spot, you want to be calling with hands that have blockers to his premium hands. So what are premium hands when he takes this line? Well, those are going to be good aces, which I do have a blocker for that, and flushes, and maybe queens, but probably not queens because remember he blasted the turn. So in this scenario, I want to have either an ace or a club in my hand. I would really like to have an ace and a club. If I had an ace and a club, I'm calling every time. I think this is probably close enough to a call, but I really do lose to all the premium made hands. And the opponent may even be value betting somewhat thinly with something like ace 10 on the turn. And that would be a bit of a disaster for me to pay off ace 10, right? So you all know I like to call, but I remember in game, this guy just looked confident. I mean, maybe he maybe he pulled one over on me and, and he got me, but... The opponent looked like he liked his hand a lot. And when I'm playing live poker, I do my best to rely on those reads without making it obvious I'm relying on those reads. And I thought the guy had it. So 
If you think the guy has it, what do you do? Well, you fold. Because that's what you're supposed to do when you think the guy has it. Um, in general, if I was playing this hand online or against a completely unknown player, I would have called pretty much every time. I mean, the fact that this is a bearded kid makes me think that he's going to be more inclined to be bluffing than normal. <laughs> so maybe a little bit of um, a thought process that kids bluff a little bit too often. So if that's the case, I should be calling more often, not folding. But this time I decided to fold. Sometimes you're just not feeling it. You know, one thing I've learned from the old school live pros is that if you've played a lot of live poker, you make reads and those do have some value and they are particularly the most valuable in very close spots. Now, a close spot here would be something like pocket kings, right? But I think this ace four is close enough and also the blocker is relevant, but I don't think it's the end of the world here. So I trusted the read, I made the fold. Y'all can berate me in the comment section and I'll talk to y'all next week.